subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button good evening and welcome to south asia news line now lipakshi khurana here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Monday, the 17th of January. India's main cities record sharp fall in COVID-19 infections. Taliban pledged to allow all Afghan girls to return to school after March 21st. And month-long religious festival begins in Nepal with holy dips prayers amid pandemic. Now for all the details, India's daily COVID-19 infections have continued to cross the 200,000 mark amid the Omicron-driven surge. However, Capital New Delhi and Financial Hub Mumbai have reported a big fall in cases in the past two days and most of those who contracted the virus have recovered at home, authorities said on Monday. India's capital New Delhi and financial hub Mumbai have reported a big fall in COVID-19 infections in the past two days. And most of those who contracted the virus have recovered at home, authorities said on Monday. Mumbai's daily new infections fell below 10,000 on Sunday for the first time since early this month, after touching an all-time high of 20,971 on January 7. Meanwhile, cases in New Delhi have fallen consistently since hitting a peak of 28,867 on January 13 and are expected to further go down, Delhi's health minister said. Both cities have said more than 80% of their COVID-19 hospital beds have remained unoccupied since the fast-transmitting Omicron variant led to a massive surge in cases from the start of the year. Definitely, in Delhi, there are the days of the fourth day. और मैंने पहले भी बताया था इसकी एडवांस इंडिकेशन उसी से आ गया था कि जो हॉस्पिटल एडमिशन थे तो एडवांस इंडिकेटर होता है हॉस्पिटल में एडमिशन के किस हॉस्पिटल में एडमिशन की बढ़ने वाली रफ्तार रुक गई थी तो हॉस्पिटल में एडमिशन बढ़ने रहे तो इसका मतलब थोड़े दिनों में रेट कम होने वाला है और कम हो चुका है However, India's daily COVID-19 infections rose by 258089 on Monday taking the tally to 37.38 million. Experts have attributed the low hospitalizations to high levels of previous infections and vaccination. India has fully vaccinated about 70% of its 939 million adults and hopes to give the primary two doses to another 70 million or so teenagers by next month. And in news from Pakistan, Pakistan's opposition Jamate Islami Party chief Sirajul Haq on Sunday hit out at Prime Minister Imran Khan and called him an international beggar for seeking IMF funding. He said that Imran Khan's departure is the only solution to all the problems of the country which is marred with financial losses. Dubbing Pakistan's PM Imran Khan as international beggar, opposition Jamaat-e Islami Party Chief Sirajul Haq on Sunday stated that Khan's departure is the only solution to all problems of the country, which is marred with financial woes. Speaking at a gathering ahead of local body polls in Lahore, Haq called for fresh election in the country and slammed the government for frequent price hike. He said Imran Khan and Pakistan cannot function together. <laughs> क्या कहेंगे क्या पहनेंगे कैसा कारोबार चलेगा कैसा पाकिस्तान चलेगा पीटीआई ने मरीशत का बड़ा घर कर दिया Huck's remarks came over Pakistan's government's decision to pass a controversial media budget last week. The legislation is a part of a deal with International Monetary Fund that has made further budgetary tightening a condition for the revival of stalled 6 billion dollar funding program. The IMF approval is crucial for the South Asian country of 220 million, which is struggling with external and current account deficits, a depreciating currency, struggling foreign reserves and rising inflation. Moving on, continuous heavy snowfall has brought life to a standstill in the illegally occupied region of Gilgit, Baltistan. Due to bad condition of roads and poor connectivity, locals are facing a lot of difficulties and this has also affected tourism in the region. 
but the Pakistan government is least bothered about their problems, residents said. The picturesque landscape of the Gilgit Baldistan region attracts many tourists during the snowfall season. Scores of tourists throng the region every year to enjoy its mesmerizing weather and beautiful mountains terrain. However, locals in the illegally occupied region have claimed due to bad road conditions, poor connectivity and no snow clearance operation, the region is witnessing a decline in the tourism sector. They blame even they have to face difficulties to commute and arrange basic commodities, but the government is not at all bothered. The rest of Makamal Bandra and then Khan Pirendi Kissi Kissim because Sabji and Dali and Kissi Kissim Sees Yahabe Espaka Mayani is already the Ferus to Bad Agrasta Kulebi, a dust in Badi and Pandra than Bad was with Chez Arabe Manlaxi. Gilgit Baldistan is known to be the coldest region of Pakistan. Since the start of the year, the continuous heavy snowfall has brought life to a standstill in the illegally occupied region. And in news from Afghanistan, Taliban spokesman Zabihullah Mujahid has said that authorities are hoping to be able to reopen all girls' school across Afghanistan in the new solar year, which starts on March 21st, offering the first timeline for addressing a key demand of the international community. Taliban spokesperson Zabiullah Mujahid, who is also the Deputy Minister of Culture and Information, in an interview told the Associated Press past Saturday that the education departments are looking to open classrooms for all girls and women following the Afghan New Year, which starts on March 21st. We are not against education, Mujahid stressed. Girls and boys must be completely segregated in schools, he said, adding that the biggest obstacle so far has been finding or building enough dorms or hostels where girls could stay while going to school. So far, the Taliban dictates have been erratic, varying from province to province. Since the Taliban takeover in mid-August last year, girls in most of Afghanistan have not been allowed back to school beyond grade 7. Private universities and high schools in capital Kabul have continued to operate uninterrupted. Most are small and the classes have always been segregated. The Taliban has always been under pressure from the international community, who have mostly frozen funds for Afghanistan, to commit upholding women's rights since the takeover. The international community says it will judge the Taliban by their actions, even as it scrambles to provide billions of dollars to avert a humanitarian catastrophe that the UN Secretary-General Antonio Guterres last week warned could endanger the lives of millions. Earlier this month, the United Nations launched a $5 billion appeal for Afghanistan, the single largest appeal for one country. And moving on to news from Nepal, Nepal on Sunday started giving COVID-19 vaccine booster shots as coronavirus infections surge due to Omicron variant. The health ministry has said the booster doses will be restricted to frontline workers for one week after which they'll be offered to people 60 and older. Nepal began giving COVID-19 vaccine booster shots on Sunday. As coronavirus infections surged due to the spread of the Omicron variant, officials said. The Himalayan nation has reported over 853,730 confirmed COVID-19 cases so far since the pandemic began. The booster shots will be restricted to frontline workers for one week, the health ministry said, after which they'll be offered to people 60 and older. Those who have completed six months after getting a second vaccine dose will be eligible for booster dose, the government said in a statement. The government of Nepal have uh, decided to carry on with the booster dose uh, and uh, starting from today. Uh, they have uh, privileged uh, first the frontline workers, that is the hospital staff and then uh, uh, front lines like uh, police, traffic, etc. Our hospital is the nursing staff. Swasti Kormi Aru, Hospital Makam Gorigoro, Infectivity, Economy Seven Times Sosti, Amro Boji Abosama, Oli Manpower, the Arrange Gornukulagi, Terini, Samashar, Aida Heko Belama, Oli Jun Covid, Kote Booster Dose, Ayo, Tiskolagi, Toniba Dide, Yose, Economy Useful, or Kote Frontline or Lati, you have motivation, you have encouragement. The government has banned large public gatherings and closed schools and colleges until the end of January to curb the rate of infection. 
it is also compulsory for people to produce proof of full vaccination to use public services from this week onwards. And more news from Nepal. Scores of Hindu devotees took a holy dip in the Sali Nadi River in Nepal as the month-long festival of Swastani Brata Katha began on Monday. The annual event is devoted to fasting, holy bathing and reading of sacred text. Braving the winter chills, scores of Hindu women devotees gathered at the banks of Sali Nadi River in Nepal to take a holy dip and offer prayers as part of rituals of Swasthani Bratakatha festival that began on Monday. The annual month-long religious festival is marked by fasting, holy bathing and reading sacred scriptures especially by women for their family's welfare or getting a good spouse. Devotees during the festival read one chapter out of 31 lessons a day from the religious book of Swasthani, which comprises of stories including tales on creation of the world, Hindu deities and demons. <laughs> हामीले यसलाई मेलाको रूपमा नबनो मात्र माधव नारायण व्रतको रूपमा चाहिँ हामीले सञ्चालन गरिराखेका छौं र यसमा चाहिँ हामी प्रत्येक दिनको नित्य पूजा र माधव नारायण व्रत चाहिँ सुचारु रूपले सञ्चालन गर्छौं डेविटीज हु ऑब्जर्व फास्ट ड्यूरिंग द फेस्टिवल डू नॉट ईट फूड्स कुक बाय अदर्स दे ओनली ईट राइस शुगर पीस अमंग्स द फूड्स दैट आर कंसीडर्ड सेक्रेड ऑन द फाइनल डे ऑफ द फास्टिंग ऑल द ऑफरिंग्स मेड टू डिफरेंट गॉड्स are immersed in the river. In a bid to boost the income of farmers and promote the production of kachai lemon, an exotic horticultural fruit, a three-day-long festival was organized in India's northeastern state of Manipur. Lemon cultivation is one of the main sources of income for the farmers in the region. The 18th edition of the Kachai Lemon Festival was held over the past weekend at Kachai Village ground in Ukrul district of India's northeastern Manipur state. The annual event aims to promote this unique kind of lemon fruit and to encourage lemon farmers. Themed organic Kachai Lemon for safe environment and rural transformation, more than 360 stalls were put up by the local lemon farmers. Kachai Lemon of Manipur has also been accorded Geographical Indication or GI registration tag and is widely grown in Ukrul's Kachai village. Unlike the other lemon varieties grown in other parts of the world, Kachai lemon is considered unique because of its high ascorbic acid. Authorities said more than 200,000 lemon plants are growing in the village today and lemon production has increased eightfold. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude, the top stories once again. India's main cities record sharp fall in COVID-19 infections. Taliban pledge to allow all Afghan girls to return to school after March 21st. And month-long religious festival begins in Nepal with holy dips prayers amid pandemic. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash Newsline and follow us on Twitter at Newsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.